Hey guys, what's up? It is time for another reaction video today. But before we get into that, I just want to say, you know what you guys should do? You guys should subscribe. And why should you subscribe? Uh, because you guys are awesome people. And you guys want to support me. And you guys like the content that I make. So obviously, why not? Just subscribe. Just hit the button. <laughs> but yeah, with that being said, please uh, comment, like, and subscribe to support this channel. And with that being said, we are going to be reacting to a video of all reaction videos. I feel like a lot of people have reacted to this video and I'm going to because I feel like I need to. Uh, it's got 17 million views. It's been around for almost 10 years now. But the most important thing is it actually will explain the difference between the UK, Great Britain, and England. We'll finally get explained. We will finally know the mystery of the cluster of islands and what is the difference between them. Super excited about knowing it. I'm already in the comments. Everyone is saying, oh, this isn't the UK or like they're not talking about the UK. This doesn't mean this. And I don't really quite know what you guys are talking about. So we're going to watch this and learn. It's going to be awesome. And also with that being said, this was actually recommended to me by you guys. Um, I couldn't give a shout out because I couldn't actually find the name uh, I got lost in all the comments, so I couldn't find it, so I'm sorry about that. Anyway, with that, let's get into this video and find out what is the difference between the United Kingdom, Great Britain, and England. It will finally be explained. The mystery is solved. Let's get into this. To the United Kingdom and a whole lot more explained by me, CGP Gray. United Kingdom, England, Great Britain, are these three the same place? Are they different places? Do British people secretly laugh at those who use the terms incorrectly? Who knows the answers to these questions? I do, and I'm going to tell you right now. For the lost, this is the world. Okay, actually, uh, do you guys make fun of people that don't know the difference, or are you guys irritated that we don't know? Because I feel like we probably should. Um, but yeah, just let me know if you guys uh, secretly just make fun of everyone who's like, oh, it's the UK when it's not. Anyway. This is the European continent, and this is the place we have to untangle. The area shown in purple is the United Kingdom. Part of the confusion is that the United Kingdom is not a single country, but instead is a country of countries. It contains inside of it four co-equal and sovereign nations. The first of these is England, shown here in red. England is often confused with the United Kingdom as a whole because it's the largest and most populous of the nations and contains the de facto capital city, London. To the north. Okay, up until recently, probably about six months ago, I actually did think all of this was England. Uh... I forget why I learned the difference, but I did. Oh, I forget. Oh my gosh, I forget what they are now. He will explain in just a second. I want to say this is Northern Ireland. Oh my gosh, I suck at geography. Okay, let him explain. North is Scotland, shown in blue, and to the west is Wales, shown in white. And, often forgotten even by those who live in the United Kingdom, is Northern Ireland, shown in orange. Each country has a local term for the population. While you can call them all British, it's not recommended as the four... Okay, so Northern Ireland, Scotland, England, and Wales is the UK. I think that's what he said. Countries generally don't like each other. The Northern Irish, Scottish, and Welsh regard the English as slave-driving colonial masters, no matter that all three... <laughs> oh, that's hilarious have their own devolved parliaments and are allowed to vote on English laws despite the reverse not being true, and the English generally guard the rest as rural yokels who spend too much time with their sheep. However, as the four constituent countries don't have their own passports, they are all British citizens, like it or not. They are British citizens of the United Kingdom, whose full name, by the way, is the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. So where's- I feel like people should just call it that, honestly. It would just- it would solve some confusion if you spelt it out. Again, that's probably our fault for just not- caring enough to pay attention honestly we should know that i mean most people about like probably know the u.s is obviously comprised of 50 states even if you don't know any of the states you know at least that so i feel like it's kind of our fault for um not paying attention Great Britain hiding. Right here. The area covered in black is Great Britain. Unlike England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, Great Britain is a geographical rather than a political term. Great Britain is the largest island among the British Isles. Within the United Kingdom, the term Great Britain is often used to refer to England, Scotland, and Wales alone with the intentional exclusion of Northern Ireland. This is mostly, but not completely true, as all three constituent countries have islands that are not part of Great Britain, such as the Isle of Wight, part of England, the Welsh Isle of Anglesey, the Scottish Hebrides, the Shetland Islands, the Auckland Islands, and the Islands of the Clyde. The second- The only ones I've ever heard of are the Shetland Islands, and I don't know why, but... Okay, so Great Britain is in the black, so it is Wales, Scotland, and England, I think. 
Northern Ireland is out, not part of Great Britain. The biggest island in the British Isles is Ireland. It's worth noting at this point that Ireland is not a country, like Great Britain is a geographical, not political term. The island of Ireland contains on a two countries, Northern Ireland, which we have already discussed, and the Republic of Ireland. When people say they are Irish, they are referring to the Republic of Ireland, which is a separate country from the United Kingdom. However, both the Republic of Ireland and the United Kingdom are members of the European Union, even though England... Huh. Okay, I mean, that's kind of interesting. Um, why is there a difference? What, what's like the historical uh, reason why there's North, Northern Ireland and then the Republic of Ireland and why are they separate? Um, just curious. In particular likes to pretend that it's an island in the mid-Atlantic rather than 50 kilometers off the coast of France, but that's a story for another time. To review, the two largest islands in the British Isles are Ireland and Great Britain. Ireland has on a two countries, the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, while Great Britain mostly contains three, England, Scotland, and Wales. These last- Okay. All right. He's starting to get this. Uh, oh, wait, he's talking about the British Isles, though. The last three, when combined with Northern Ireland, formed the United Kingdom. Okay, no, no, they're all boxed in separately. Okay, okay, I, 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 I got it now. This is Great Britain, United Kingdom, includes Northern Ireland, and then he's getting ready to talk about the British Isles, which includes all of this. Uh, okay, I got it, though. It is, it is a little confusing. It's mainly confusing because of Northern Ireland. Like, why is it sometimes part of it, but then, like, why is it part of the United Kingdom and not part of Great Britain? There are still many unanswered questions, such as why when you travel to Canada is there British royalty on the money? To answer this, we need to talk about empire. You can't have gone to school in the English-speaking world without having learned that the British Empire- Okay, so, yeah, okay, this is a, kind of like uh, my last video that I just did, the uh, visualization. And yeah, this is why the English money is everywhere and why so many people speak English because the English okay sorry the British were definitely uh, good at expanding we will leave yeah they're expanders for sure I once banned a fourth of the world's land and governed nearly a fourth of the world's people. While it's easy to remember the parts of the British Empire that broke away violently, we often forget how many nations gained independence through diplomacy, not bloodshed. These want to be nations struck a deal with the Empire, where they continue to recognize the uh, I only recognize the Canadian flag. Monarchy as the head of state in exchange for a local autonomous parliament. To understand how they are connected, we need to talk about the crown. Not the physical crown that sits behind glass in the Tower of London and earns millions of tourist pounds for the UK, but the crown is a complicated legal entity best thought of as a one-man corporation. Who created this corporation? God did. According to British tradition, all power is- That is a creepy picture of God. Like, if God looked like that, that is creepy. <laughs> Vested in God and the monarch is crowned in a Christian ceremony. God, however, not wanting to be bothered with micromanagement, conveniently delegates his power to an entity called the Crown. While this used to be the physical crown in the Tower of London, it evolved over time into a legal corporation soul, able to be controlled only by the ruling monarch. It's a useful reminder that the United Kingdom is still technically a theocracy, with the reigning monarch acting as both the head of state and the supreme governor of the official state religion, Anglicanism. Such are the oddities that arise when dealing with a thousand-year-old monarchy. Back to Canada and the rest. The former colonies that gained their independence through diplomacy and continue to recognize the authority of the crown are known as the Commonwealth realm. They are, in decreasing order- So yeah, a lot of people in this comment said he talks really fast. I don't mind it as much. Um, it just sounds like he's on like 1.5 speed. But yeah, I definitely need to pause and kind of absorb what he's saying. Population, Canada, Australia, Papua New Guinea, New Zealand, Jamaica, the Solomon Islands, Belize, the Bahamas, Barbados, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines. Yeah, he, I mean, he should definitely be an auctioneer. I mean, that is- Pretty fast. Grenada, Antigua, and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, and Tuvalu. All are independent nations, but still recognize the monarchy as the head of state, even though it has little real power within their borders. There are three further entities that belong to the crown, and these are the crown dependencies, the Isle of Men, Jersey, and Guernsey. Unlike the Commonwealth realm, they are not considered independent nations, but are granted local autonomy by the crown and British citizenship by the United Kingdom, though the UK does reserve the right to overrule the laws of their local assemblies. Are we done now? So wait, for someone who's, someone who's smarter than I am that knows this stuff, is that in comparison to kind of like a U.S. territory? Uh, yeah, like what he was talking about, those three islands. Um, is that kind of the same as a territory? Uh, if someone could comment and let me know, that'd be great. Or I will look it up later. Now? Almost, but not quite. 
there are still a couple of loose threads, such as this place, the tiny city of Gibraltar on the southern coast of Spain, famous for its rock, its monkeys, and for causing diplomatic tension between the United Kingdom and Spain. Or what about the Falkland Islands, which caused so much tension between the United Kingdom and Argentina that they went to war over them? These places belong in the last group of crown properties known as British Overseas Territories, but their former name, Crown Colonies, gives away their origin. They are the last vestiges of the British Empire. Unlike the Commonwealth realm, they have not become independent nations and continue to rely on the United Kingdom for military and sometimes economic assistance. Like the Crown Dependencies, everyone born within their borders is a British citizen. The Crown Colonies are, in decreasing order of population, Bermuda, the Cayman Islands, the Turks and Caicos Islands, Gibraltar, the British Virgin Islands, Ecrateria and Decelia, Anguilla, St. Helena, oh, the Ascension geez, Islands, Tristan so Decreel, islands. Montserrat, the British Indian Ocean Territory, the South Georgia and South Sandwich Islands, the Falkland Islands, the British Antarctic Territory, and the Pitcairn Islands. I didn't know Britain actually had... I didn't know they actually did take part of Antarctica. Can't, so they really have been on every, like, I think, other than maybe Greenland, they really have been on every continent. Well, I, I, mean, I know Greenland is not a continent by itself, but... Wow. Huh. Crazy. For our final Venn diagram, the United Kingdom is a country situated on the British Isles and is part of the crown, which is controlled by the monarchy. Also part of the crown... Again, like, I'm gonna have to look this up or something, but why is Ireland, like, the Republic of Ireland out of... It's part of the British Isles... But it's not part of the United Kingdom, and it's not under the crown. I don't understand why that is. And the British Isles are the crown dependencies. The independent nations of the former empire that still recognize the crown are the Commonwealth realm, and the non-independent remnants of the former empire are the British... Oh my gosh. Seriously. <laughs> British uh. overseas territories. Thank you very much for watching. Okay, so... That actually did explain quite a bit i think i'm gonna have to watch that a couple more times now to fully understand the concept um but i definitely hope hopefully that will help me in the future videos and i can actually like point out point out when the video is uh talking about the country's wrong or it, I'm, I'm sure it's just gonna help me to know and i, I feel like i should know like i mean the uk brand i mean it's, it's such a powerful like like they like they said like they ran a fourth of the ward at one time, and not to know, like what is still under that is just it is a little, pretty kind of ignorant. I mean, I'm, I'm just gonna say that it is. Again, I do think some feeling like, I could be wrong on this, but I do feel like most countries kind of teach their own um, history, and then world history is supposed to teach all this stuff. But yeah, anyway, that is the video. I definitely did learn a lot. It was super interesting. Obviously, yeah, was, like eight, almost 18 million people thought so too. <laughs> Anyway, I will see you guys next time. Uh, again, please comment, like, subscribe, and I will catch you guys next time. Thanks.